the What To Next podcast helps to build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they love for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next great read, then the show. Hi, Mila. Welcome to our Trinix podcast. Hi. Thanks for having me. So happy to have you back. I am so excited to chat with you. What you've been up to this past year? Oh, my goodness. What a year 2023 has already been. Um, gosh, uh, very, you know, busy writing. Um, I had uh, the the upcoming book to finish, which is Mafia Target. And then I also had a, a short novella that I'm finishing for a an anthology that's coming out in June called Pride Not Prejudice that um, are spinoff characters of Mafia Target characters. So I'm like, at the same time, kind of finishing both of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's chat about because when we first met uh, about a year ago, Mafia Mistress and Mafia Darling were just coming out and we we're just like, it was starting to build momentum. And then it just exploded, like, you know, in, in, a, in a very pleasantly surprised way, you know, right place, right time, right genre, right mafia and right location, because it's like Italy is unique. What has been that experience been like, you know, having this series become, you know, what it is today? I'm, I mean, I feel just incredibly blessed. I mean, to see, you know, the books recommended, you know, alongside like the, you know, the Sarah Cates and the QB Tylers mm -hmm. and the Sophie Larks and the LJ Shens and the, I mean, just to have like my books, you know, Renee Rose, um, I'm trying to think who else, um, you know, just to have my books sort of in that conversation is very um, humbling and wild. And I feel very grateful. Um, it's it's a genre that I love. It's a genre that I read. I mean, so, you know, I've read all those amazing authors and, and really to get to know that book community, which is, um, you know, different than my other experience. It's, it's, um, it's been very, it's been amazing. It's been really amazing. I mean, um, it's also been a lot of work because I didn't expect it to be so popular. And that's a nice problem to have. I'm not complaining at all. But, um, you know, I sort of wrote Mafia Mistress as a lark between other projects mm -hmm. um, with the other pen name. And so now it's like the Finelli side has has really... Um, become a priority where it, where in the past maybe I, I assumed that it would not be I assumed that it would kind of be a little, just a little fun little secret thing it's become not so secret and it's become a, sort of a much bigger um uh enterprise than I had imagined but again that's a wonderful problem to have and I'm absolutely not complaining and what has been your experience? Because it's like getting into this community is completely different. There's discrete covers, there's pre hour marketing, there's arc requests, there's a whole different thing. There's KDP, there's, you know, you get to choose it all, you know, um, and at the same time, make decisions and just create its its own business, you know, it's not just writing. A lot of it has been a learning, yeah, a lot of it's been a learning curve for me. Um, and it's been very educational. Um, it's from the publishing side of it it's fascinating mm -hmm. um you know the whole alternate cover uh phenomenon is just really eye-opening um and you know I feel like the marketing is is different the um the uh the way readers find books is different I mean so it's just um it's been uh it's yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's um but it's definitely been a learning curve for me. Uh and it's great. I, I feel like the enthusiasm that I've encountered is very different than what I've seen in the past. Like the the passion of the that the sort of um younger romance readers and specifically the the dark romance readers mm -hmm. is uh like amazing it's uh, just unparalleled i mean it's very different um 
and and very exciting, I think, for the future of the genre. I mean, you can really you can see the passion there. You can see it's like I get it because I was I'm that reader, too. You know, mm-hmm. I, I get the enthusiasm and the passion and the investment that you feel in certain characters. Um, you know, there are certain characters from books that I've read that I love that if you mention them, I will like swoon on the floor. <laughs> like I, I totally get it. Um, so that's, it's been fun, but it's been a learning curve for sure. As far as like some of the business stuff and, and, uh, learning how to, how to do, how to, how to run your own sort of mini publishing company. Yeah. And, and I feel like five, five years ago, I wouldn't have known how to do that. Maybe eight years ago, I definitely wouldn't have known how to do that, but I've been around long enough now that I feel like it was the right time for me. Like, cause I was like, yes, I know how to do all this now. So I still do, I just still do uh, text Sierra Simone many questions and she's very patient with me and answers all of them. But um, so I do, so I do still have help from, from uh, Adriana Herrera and Sierra Simone and others that are, that are like have been self publishing along indie pubbing a lot longer than I have. So I have to give them credit. Yeah, I love it. I think it's like the community is so different. It's like I found, I remember when I started reading romance, it was actually indie romance, but I fell in, what I fell in love because it was what I could afford. You know, the time was earning no, not a lot of money. And it was like just KDP, K- KU or like 99 cents, 199. And I was like, that's what I can afford. And I was consuming them like, like there was no tomorrow because there were just like an opportunity. There was like a world worldwide of opportunities there. And so I became obsessed with them. Like it was like new, like this was my identity. I was a reader. I was a romance reader. I was like a reader of like, of any type of genre. I had just discovered books based on word of mouth. They're based on like, you know, the algorithm and like there's Facebook groups. Like it was like, and once you find an author, you find the group and you go to their group and then you hear meet other readers and they will talk about the book. And it's like, and they create edits and they create, tell you the whole identity of the, you know, the star sign, the stuff, you know? And so it's kind of like, it's a really neat community, like the best of it. There, yes, there's some dark sides, there's some stuff, there's some downsides, but the great, like the overall, the community is like so like invested, you know? For sure. Yeah. For sure. Which is so great to see. Um, yeah. It's great. So, all right. So let's chat about Matthew Target. Tell us the elevator pitch. We got a hint about it, but <laughs> tell us the elevator pitch. Yeah. The elevator pitch is, um, it is the story of a, um, the heir to a mafia throne who has left uh, his family because he is gay and he cannot feels he cannot be gay in his uh, in the mafia. So he sort of strikes out on his own. Um, but that old world doesn't want to leave him alone. So he kind of, you know, is always he's constantly being pulled back and reminded of his former life. Um, and uh, an assassin from his old life has been hired to kill him. And so, uh, and it's the story of, you know, how a, a former mafia heir falls in love with the assassin that has been hired to kill him. Um, I was watching a lot of Killing Eve, like before I, before I wrote the book. So it's very, it's very cat and mouse, um, a little back and forth, you know, I'm toying with you now you know you're toying with me so it's um it was a lot of fun to write actually I can imagine I feel like there's like a twisty you know because it's like how you how are you gonna make it work how are you gonna get this stuff and you know be with the guy who is trying who he has to kill you know how this is gonna work but at the same time I think it could be a lot of fun for an author to keep keep the reader guessing you know, is this a romance? Is not a romance? Is this a thriller? What is happening here? <laughs> you know, right? And the, one of the big hurdles for the book is that this is the assassin that tried to kill Fausto from Mafia yeah. Mistress, um, that takes the shot that you know almost kills Fausto. So a big hurdle is getting the readers to actually like <laughs> to like this assassin because um, I don't think they. You know, well, I don't think they like when Fausto gets hurt. So 
I was going to ask how fast is Zoom, but before that, you made us like Enzo. So I think we're good. <laughs> I think we're safe to say, like, you're going to make us like fall in love with Alessandro, you know? <laughs> I think you will. I think you will. So how's Pasto doing? Let's talk Fausto. about baby, baby daddy. <laughs> Fausto baby daddy. There's a lot of Fausto in this book, um, which I think readers will be happy about um, because obviously Julio is his son. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of... Um, you know, Julio's still reckoning with what does it mean to be this man's son? You know, I, he wants to step out of his father's shadow. Will his father let him? You know, what is it? What does it mean, you know, to to be this man's son? Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of Fausto in the book, which was which was fun to write. Um, I do. I do love Fausto. So, you know, he's settling into fatherhood and still running his empire and he's got more gray in his hair (laughs) and looking so good Mm -hmm. awesome so we gotta we gotta wait for Muffy Target and then you have a short story coming up too so what can we expect for that one is just more mafia goodness yeah so the short story is uh mafia um it is uh Characters from Mafia Target, it is male male, um, Russian Mafia. One one of the heroes is uh, the head of the Russian Mafia. Uh, And um, the other hero is a fashion designer from Paris. So yeah, it's, (laughs) I'm still finalizing that one, but it's, it's fun. It's sort of a, a wild ride. That sounds really good. So, oh my gosh, I can't wait. Um, so let's chat some book recommendations. So what kind of books we recommend our listeners to pick up? Oh my goodness. Well, um, the book that I just, I just finished a QB Tyler book. I love all of her stuff. And if, you know, I mean, age gap, she's like the queen of age gap and, uh, and taboo stuff. Mm-hmm. So I just finished um, what was meant to be, which is age gap second chance romance it's the parents best friend um who they she has an affair with uh her parents best friend when she's 18 19 he goes away for a few years to go be a doctor somewhere and then comes back um when he finds out that she's engaged to another guy so it it sort of has all the things I love because I love a cheating romance and <laughs> there's a, like a little bit of cheating in that. So I love it. Um, and I love an age gap, obviously. Uh, the book that I'm almost finished with right now is Lily Gold's Faking with Benefits, mm-hmm. which is reverse harem. Um, it's like three guys who have this relationship advice podcast <laughs> And uh, it, she is their neighbor across the hall. She's completely inept at dating. And so she asks for them to basically be her fake boyfriends and help her learn how to date. And it's very hot and adorable and uh, really unique, which I, I, I'm i enjoying it quite a bit. Um, and I'm also, I've been on a huge hockey romance kick. I just, mm-hmm. I, I cannot get enough. Um, I'm obsessed with hockey TikTok and like all of like these young hockey players that um, are way too young for me, but very pretty to look at. Um, so uh, I've been reading a lot of hockey romances and um, my favorite is Heated Rivalry by Rachel Reed, mm-hmm. which I probably recommend. I swear anytime I talk to anybody about hockey romance, I just I love it so much um he did rivalry and then the follow-up is the the long game yeah um those are and those are my favorites so i had so. a recommendation for you since you're in a heated rivalry you need a look alike so ice out by c.e ricci is two rivals to lovers they're in college um and they have a superstition that if they hook up like they they 
they win the game. So, um, but they're rivals. It's it's it's, it's hot. It's steamy. It has the whole enemies to lovers. We we gotta fuck this out. You know. Oh, I love it. Get it I out of the it. system. You know. Um, so, and that's like a hockey. And I just finished Mile High by Liz Tom Ford. It's six hundred pages. It's long, but it's actually really good. Like it's men in therapy, but it's actually really good. Um, mile high, mile high. Let's come for her next book, which is the one I'm reading, is the right move, and it's fake relationship basketball romance. Mm. And I did not know that I needed basketball romance in my life, but I was like, oh, because they're more famous than the hockey players, and so he has to deal with fame and along with all the other stuff. Oh, I like that. I love yeah. the sports romance. I'm yeah. a total sucker for sports romance. Yeah. I don't like sports watching regular sports, but I like reading about sports romance, <laughs> <laughs> especially hockey. I did not realize I love hockey as much as like my hockey romance. Like any type, you give me a puck, you give me an enforcer or any type of way they were fighting it off in the ice. And I'm like, yeah, I'm here for it, you know? <laughs> so so Mila tell us where you can find you online um well you can find me at milafinelli.com you can find me um on instagram I, I think it's mila underscore finelli underscore author um and I'm on tiktok mila finelli author so I'm I'm sort of around um yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you Mila for being on the show thanks for having me it was so fun if you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whatyourrenextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Libro.fm, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name. But you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community. If you're new to audiobooks, there's a perfect way to squeeze into more reading to your busy life. Listen with the free Libro.fm app while you do your chores, walk your dog, relax at home. The Watch Remix podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get two audiobooks on Libro FM for the price of one with your first month of membership. Use code What to Read Next. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the US. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.